Hey you guys, John here with Terminal Goblin Games, and today we're back with Floor 3 of the Black Falcon Mega Dungeon. We're trying out something new today, because I'm writing a script and reading it rather than recording my voice raw as I draw the map. Hoping this will cut down video time and other interesting things. We're also using a random dungeon generator. Uh, the one I'm using is made by a friend of mine, Likely Arrow. It isn't released yet, but I'll link it in the comments once it is. In the meantime, you can check out his itch.io where he has other things up for download. Thanks again, Arrow. The reason I'm using a random dungeon generator is that I wasn't feeling super inspired this week. Uh, work's been really busy and I've got some other things that I was attending to. Uh, this happens to everyone in this hobby. We have our own lives outside dungeon crawling after all. If you're new to the hobby or DMing, then I hope this shows you that you can still make some fun things for your sessions when you're not feeling 100% on the ball creatively. With that said, let's get into it. So we ended up with 28 rooms, which is even bigger than the last floor. You can see that this is mainly on the left side of the page as well. This was totally on accident, but it's great in that we can expand to the right. Uh, if the players leave for a few weeks, I want it to feel like it is ever-changing, so having this room to expand is going to be useful. But who's changing it? Well, it's the Mythic Underworld after all, so, you know, magic. <laughs> Uh, but I do have a player joining this week, a new one, and I need to get them involved with the party. So I thought of having him encased in a small cube of bricks near the stairs into the floor. Uh, laid by some mysterious monster. Monster? Monster. Uh, we'll simply call him the Mason, and I'll throw his stats on the screen now. He is a lanky humanoid with light gray skin that is pulled taut over his large frame. Uh, he's got hair that envelops his entire head, and he's got four way too long arms. For room 28, I also rolled on Arrow's special room table and got stone statues, so I'm going to tie the mason in with this room as his base. He roams around building stuff and then comes here to hang out amongst his statues. He has a 2 in 6 chance of being here and is a fixture on our wandering monster table, which I also have on the screen. So we've explained how things changed. Uh, what would we do if the players end up just killing the mason? Well, I'm, I'm betting against that, but you know, murder hoboism tends to prevail. In that case, uh, I'll freeze and I'll something, I'll figure it out. Now, for the majority of these rooms, I ended up just using the basic fantasy RPG dungeon creator tool on its website. It rolls according to the core rules dungeon stocking procedure. This is really handy for a quick generate-as-you-go dungeon, and for weeks like this when you need something gameable but you didn't have a module or something on the back burner. Which I guess brings up why I didn't use one of the free Basic Fantasy modules. Uh, the answer to that is, I'm running and playtesting this for eventual release. So after it's all said and done, I'm going to be going back over these maps in Krita to make them nicer, and fix my errata, uh, which I will be doing a video on. And I have a lot of errata since I tend to change things during play because I get hit with sudden bouts of inspiration. One thing I love about this generator is that it gave me a bunch of rooms and features I would have never thought of, like a door that just leads to a spike pit. This led me thinking of a fun puzzle. It's a 10x10, 10, 10, 10 foot deep spike pit. If the players open the door and just see a wall and a spike pit, they'll probably just close the door, rendering it to a what in the world's going on here thought. So I sweetened the deal a little bit. I put some gems and a chainmail bag near the bottom. The spikes are coming from all sides, so I'll have to risk taking some damage to get it. The gems are worth 500 gold, though they don't know that, so we will just describe them as looking exceptionally fine. And it's in a chainmail bag so they can see through it. Uh, I would rule this as having the thief make a climb check to grab it. If they fail, they take damage. And I run D6 thief skills, so I would also rule that anyone can try it on a 1 in 6 chance of success. Uh, but really, any sort of resolution type would work here. You could probably even do uh, an ability roll, uh, roll under for like dexterity or something. Our narrative on this floor, aside from the mason, is that a group of hobgoblins and orcs are fighting against some gnolls. Uh, the gnolls, being fierce fighters, are faring well with much less force. However, some gnolls got separated due to the spiders in room 5, and the orcs are preparing a raid. I'm going to run this as every 5 dungeon turns, the orcs will have a 2 and 6 chance on beginning their attack. The party may run into the raiding party, or even just find the results of slaughtered gnolls or orcs. And speaking of orcs, they have a neat advantage here in the form of shriekers in room 13. If they're set off, the orcs will know something's coming and prepare for a fight. So hopefully the players don't get uh, too curious or they're going to have some orcs bearing down on them. We also have some trap treasure. Uh, because I'm a bastard, one of them is a burlap sack with 1200 copper pieces in room 12. 
Uh, its only feature there is that it is trapped with a lightning blast. In 15, uh, there's a treasure chest with 3,400 silver, 2,600 gold, and a map to a magic item that is to be determined, a potion of speed, and one scroll of hold person. The only way to get this is to either bend or eliminate the bars somehow. And that's about it from this floor. Uh, I'll be adding some flavor to the empty rooms, mainly to progress the story um, with the, the lost dwarven city and the heaven's gate and litter about traces of dwarven civilization, you know, like broken alcohol pots and beard trimmers and <laughs> that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this format. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you prefer this style of video or like more off the cuff? Uh, please let me know your thoughts, because I'm not making these to get YouTube famous or anything. I just want to make good videos for tabletop gamers. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. See ya.